Like, Trump could not do this without the silence and neutrality. What is, what is, I feel like there's a quotation and it's like the hottest places in hell are reserved for those yeah. people who in moments of crisis maintain their neutrality. I mean, and I think there's like a, a Dante, like the circle of hell. There's I'm going to look anyway. this up because I got to anyway. tweet it because that's how I feel right now. <laughs> You're composing tweets while we're taping. Hello, everyone. It's JVL here with my best friend, Sarah Longwell of The Bulwark. So I am writing today a big rah-rah. It's the girls versus the boys thing. In the last couple days where we've had Trump talking about how he's going to protect women, whether they like it or not, and Charlie Kirk getting real upset at the idea of women voting independently and Jesse Waters saying that like if his wife voted for Harris, like it would be time to divorce her. It would be like having an affair. This is another like Wait, mask. What? Oh, you didn't see this? Wait, yeah, Jesse Waters. Jesse Waters was like, if my, you know, if my wife voted for, for Harris, that would be tantamount to her having an affair. It would be time for divorce. Okay. Jesse Waters is such a scumbag. Also, his wife is, I believe, his former intern that he cheated on his last wife with. I mean, who can say? The heart wants what it wants. Okay. Uh, it's another, these people are all part of Pro-Life Inc. to varying degrees. And, you know, like, I'm sorry. The level of upset that this part of the magosphere is having over the idea of women electing Harris is kind of stunning. And again, it's just something that uh, just speaks to my failure of a, to understand the world clearly in the before times. Because I didn't understand that this strain existed in conservatism, and it act absolutely did. But I didn't see it in my circles, and so I thought it didn't exist. And uh, there is a whole big... Now, maybe it's gotten bigger over the last eight years than it used to be, but it was I'm sure it was always there. But there's a huge part of this that is just like, we have to control women. Sorry, you're supposed to say something here. But yeah, you're like, sorry. yeah, obviously. <laughs> you're like, welcome to the world, JVL. <laughs> no, no, I, no, I too. I mean, I would say the big revelation for me was on, not revelation, like, the thing is, is like, we know, you, you know, something's there, right? You, you like, it's like, you know, um... If you're like a Democrat, you know, there's like a real strain of anti-Semitism, uh, you know, among uh, some of these young people uh, or, or just in general. Um, but like you don't know, you know that it, like it exists, like, you know, it, it, things exist in pockets. So, like I knew that there was racism. Uh, you know that there's sexism. Like, you know that those things exist. The question is, is like, at what point do they become dominant strains? Like... At what point do you realize that they are not just something that lives in the shadows of your coalition? Um, and I think that Democrats had to like grapple with this a little bit, uh, but it is like on the right, the extent to which you are, we were surrounded by people who were driven actually by racism, nationalism, um, sexism, how much of the anti, abortion movement yeah. is around controlling women's bodies um that that is like an animating now i've also always been like well regardless of what animates certain groups of people there's still the question of like is something right or wrong right like what is our what our immigration policy is like we should evaluate clearly uh and like even if some of the people who are pro let's just say like uh closed board not closed borders but like stricter border control some of them are animated by racism like that doesn't mean that we shouldn't have stricter border control right we still should uh in my opinion uh that being said like the extent to which people on the right are animated by racism xenophobia sexism uh misogyny um really has i think and, and also, like, didn't mean any of the other stuff. Like, that it's all a posture. I mean, this is one of the things that was just revelatory for me. I had been in conservative think tanks, uh, and I had sort of taken 
these taken Christians and Catholics at their word around their opposition to gay marriage that, you know, they had religious objections, sincerely held ones, only to watch all of those people, <clears throat> Rick Santorum, totally capitulate Molly Hemingway uh, in the face of Donald Trump. They just were like, oh, yeah, it doesn't matter. These thrice married, adjudicated rapist cheats people out of like not a single a uh, thing that he did was consistent with the moral universe that they had claimed to live in. Ben Shapiro. Um, and then also the anti-Semitism on the right. I mean, like, at what point does you want to talk about the kids on college campuses? Scott Jennings. OK, I, I didn't I didn't care for it. Uh, you know what else? Donald Trump literally had dinner at Mar-a-Lago with the most well-known white nationalists. Self-described white nationalists. Right. This is yeah. in the country. That's what, Donald Trump, the person running for president. 